Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here this evening. Uh, we are going to go ahead with policy, and I am uh, standing in uh, to lead uh, since our policy person has left the board, and we're giving our new person time to acclimate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Proceed ahead. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you um, for being here this evening. Um, we have some policies that will be up for first reading. Um, those three policies are listed here on the slide. Policy 626, policy 800, and policy 827. And then we have some policies that are coming back for second reading. Uh, we did discuss these at the last month's meeting. We put them out for comment. Uh, and there were some comments made by board members during the last meeting. I believe we've addressed those comments and we will share where we've addressed those comments in the actual policy. So tonight um, for the policy review for the first reading, these three policies um, fall within the business office. And these policies are being brought to the board um, as a result of their uh, time for review and updating if necessary. So Mr. Sean Ryan, our assistant business manager, is going to um, highlight any of the changes or updates that we are recommending. So Sean, you can take it away and I will click on the policy as you guide. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so the one big change to cash management is a result of the um, need for clarification on how the district handles interest expense. Um, in reviewing the policy, uh, the um, district used to have, uh, it used to say that the school district is permitted to retain for administrative expense up to $500 per year of interest earned on federal grant cash balances. Regardless of federal rewarding agency, interest earnings exceeding $500 per year shall be remitted annually to the Department of Health and Human Services Payment Management System. Um, Department of Health and Human Services Payment Management System has been updated to say appropriate federal agency or pass-through entity. Um, and then it goes on to say through a physical medium or through an, a physical, an electronic medium using either an automated clearinghouse network or Bedwire fund servant payment system, um, and that's been updated to say a physical check or an electronic medium such as an automated clearing house. Um, so basically, this is to meet our monitoring, monitoring standards. Um, the monitor said they needed further clarification on how uh, we will handle our interest, basically. So I can take any questions if you have any regarding those. School board directors or attendees, do you have any questions? Uh, seeing none, uh, thank you, Mr. Ryan. Proceed ahead. All right, I'm going to go to the next policy, records management. So for records management, um, this is just for review purposes. The monitors wanted to make sure that we had clear um, in writing that the district retains federal records for up to um, a period of no less than uh, seven years, which you can see under the first paragraph of authority section, it says that the board shall retain as permanent record of the district board minutes, annual auditors reports and annual financial reports and all other financial records, including financial account books, orders, bills, contracts, invoices, receipts, and purchase orders shall be retained by the district for a period of not less than six years. So that meets the standard for what our monitors are requesting, that we specifically identify what we retain and how long we retain it. Any questions from school board directors or attendees? Awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, continue ahead, Mr. Ryan. Lastly, uh, under the conflict of interest policy, um, on the second to last page towards the bottom, the, uh, the monitors were looking for a specific language regarding um, how, the, uh, how potential conflicts of interest are handled. Um, 
the paragraph starts, the superintendent or designee shall report in writing to the federal awarding agency or pass through entity any potential conflicts of interest related to a federal award in accordance with federal awarding agency policy. The monitor just wanted to make sure that this language was included in our um, review. Mr. Ryan, um, when you say, uh, who's asking us to make these changes? Oh, sorry. Um, so this was uh, a part of our federal grant monitoring. Uh, okay. That, yeah. So um, the, the monitors requested that we include this language and make sure that it's reviewed and uh, as such. So this is uh, regarding the uh, federal grant we got for Cyprus? Is that uh, this? Is, this is in regards to um, title grants, so title one through four. Oh, grant got monitoring. it. Great, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that information. From when and we so... when we present this um, to uh, the public and the school board directors, I'd I'd like to note that that this was a a, a title um, monitoring issue. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yep. Any other questions for Sean? I think those are the three policies. Yes, that's all three. Okay. All right, Ms. Hoffman, I'll keep moving. Yep, please, please, Dr. B. Coates. <laughs> okay. So we have uh, up four policies for second reading. Um, Ms. Tracy Gartner is here this evening. We went over these and there are some updates that were made. So Tracy, you can guide and I will click on the policies or do you wanna just highlight each one? If there are no changes, we can just state that for the benefit of everyone that's here, just in case someone was not here at the last meeting. Does that work? That works. All right, so I'll go to policy 338. 338. Um... Compensated professional leaves. Correct. So there were just um, two additions. And um, for clarity, or three additions for uh, clarity, under definitions, and uh, the other two uh, additions under definitions, and the last one was for um, under classroom occupational exchange leave, just adding a date uh, for um, materials to be submitted, requests to be submitted. And that were the only two uh, changes to, to this document. So I, I'll admit to not noticing this before, if you can scroll up, Dr. B. Coates. Yeah, keep going. Uh, yeah, yeah, the first page. Oh, okay. How do we define uh, professional, shown to improve professional competency? Like, how do we look at the classes and determine rigor? Like, how do we do that? And I, I clicked on it and I went to some PA state ad nauseum that made no sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Understood. Um, yes, we do look at the um, the course of study, the description of the class, right. um, and we also make sure that it is within the lack of a better term, the subject, if you will, for you know which they are uh, teaching. So I'm not giving you a leave to go study basket weaving, if that makes sense. So right. So to improve your competency in, in your area that you're already doing. Right. And I, I know in the past, um, and some people took it a little differently than I meant it. Okay. Um, I asked to see the classes that folks were taking. Um, and and that and so I mean, we're allowed to see that, correct? To see the classes they're taking. So when when someone requests a leave for, for professional development, they have to submit all of all of that 
documentation. Great. If you would, so you're asking to uh, see that before. I I think that it does help the school board directors to understand uh, what we're paying for. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think it's useful. I, I don't want it to be seen as invasive or having some other ideal to it other than curiosity and explaining to the taxpayers why um, this is happening and the value of it. So yes, in the future, please. Okay. I had a question though about that, Jen. I understand wanting to make sure and sure, but I question if it's not somewhat of a micromanagement if they have to submit their coursework to HR for approval. Right. I think that's our opportunity once they submit it for approval. I think it teeters on the edge of micromanagement when oh, we want to see the coursework prior. No, I didn't ask for prior. Okay. Oh, so, so once they submit it and it's approved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, no, not okay. that's why I was that's what I thought. Okay. I thought yeah. you were saying prior to okay. No, just yeah. prior so prior to us voting. Well, I got you. I understand. Once they've completed the coursework and submitted yeah. their paperwork, knowing what courses they took. No, they have to submit what courses they're taking before we approve uh, their their leave. Right. So isn't so that's what I'm saying. Is that somewhat of a my? I feel like some it might be somewhat of micromanagement on our part, where that's HR's job. That's no, not I'm our job. Curious. I'm I'm just curious as to what they're taking. So when someone says to me, "Hey, this person took a leave," you know, what are they studying? I can, or you could do a synopsis for it. I just want to understand what, what their sub, what their content area is. Yes, yes. Oh. Yeah, I, I I just feel I know I based on how people are in the district, I know that that would be looked at as micromanagement. Uh, but I understand wanting to know, like, if you're going to school, yes, I would like to know that they went to school for science or, but it has to be related to what they already teach. So I think that answer is already given because we're not paying for a teacher to go back to school to get their admin. Are we paying for that? We could. So we, in that case, so that's where you want to know if they're going back to school for their ad administration. I, I, no. I, I I just want to know what they're going to study when we're paying them. That's it. It's not, it's not a, to me, a big deal. Um, I'm often asked uh, what folks are studying and they have to submit it. So I'm not asking for anything extra whatsoever. But we can, you know, Dr. Picoats can advise us on this at a later date. It's not pertinent right now. Okay. I see Ms. Um, Ms. Ms. Don Roberts. has a hand up. Yep, Ms. Roberts. Yeah, hi. So my question was, was similar to that. They're going through the process of submitting this to HR, and that's when it's getting approved. And they're not going to approve it unless that course is relevant to what they, you know, should be taking. We actually approve it. We approve. So... It, the paperwork is submitted to HR. Okay. And um, for the leave, if if it is in line with their course of study and, and with the guidelines for uh, the leave, then we will add them to, we'll pre-approve it, add it to the agenda for the board to make the final vote on the leave. Okay, so my... Uh, the question I'm asking, it would not even be presented to us if they weren't taking a course that was relevant to their course, their study. Correct. So, yeah. So that's why I, my question, when you asked Jennifer about seeing it, seeing that course, will we actually have a need to see that course when it's already being approved by prior to being submitted to us or already being you know, they're going to make sure that that is done by HR prior to it even coming to us. I, or you're just saying you're just out of curiosity. You want it to. I'm curious. And no, it's not the, one class. It's many classes. Right? It's it's a whole year of coursework. I didn't hear that last part, Ms. Hoff. I'm sorry. Is it one class or many classes? It's a whole year of coursework. Correct. 
because it's it's we're talking um spatical leave like like yeah oh uh, leave mm -hmm. yeah thanks all right are we ready to go to the next eight next policy under hr yes uncompensated leave And with policy 339, uncompensated leave, the um, was uh, this change here uh, uh, that was added that uh, lists the length of time um, which they would could be out on uncompensated leave. Also to uh, advise that while on leave, they may not, not be making any money. They can't be working anywhere else making money while on leave from the district. And um, if they are not going to return or they are, we just want notice of their intent within 60 days of their scheduled return. And if they do not plan to return, then that gives us um, time where we can you know try and fill that position but it also for for professional employees it satisfies their 60 days uh notice requirement um the addition also talked about uh benefits they shall not be entitled to any leave benefits and our commitment to them to reinstate them to a position uh, that they had prior to the leave. If it's not the exact position, then it will be equal uh, to what they had before they left. Are there any questions? Ms. Ivory has her hand raised. Yeah, I did have one question. You're, yes. Part of what you said they are unable to work elsewhere to make additional money. Um, if they already are employed, you know, most te some teachers or anyone might have a second job. How do you handle that if they if they have to have a second job or if they need to take on a second job for some reason? So I would say that second job could not be during the hours that they would be working for William Penn School District. So you okay. can't take a leave of absence from us to go mm -hmm. work a job during the same time where you would be normally be at work. So okay. if, you, if you are, if you have a second job, you know, at night, I don't know that I could, um, have an argument with that because you would normally be working that job after the hours of William Penn School District. Right. I'm just curious, how do you manage that for a person that's on leave? How do you, you know, how do you manage if they're working a separate job and knowing their hours? I'm just, that just might, I'm just curious if that question might come up. Okay, let me think about that. Okay. Mr. Tong has his hand raised. So my question is, if these folks are on, this is sabbatical or just a leave? This is an uncompensated leave. Okay, then then I, I don't have a question because I, I got confused. I thought this was a sabbatical. All right, okay. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? Alrighty, just move down my window a little bit. Hello, Ms. Hopkins. It's good to see you. Just couldn't stay away. <laughs> All right, policy three four seven. Three four seven workers' compensation. The only change to this was one word to take out the those four words or five words is going to be engaged in and strike that and just add occurs. It, it okay. same thing sounds a little better. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
All right. Questions, comments? All right, Tracy, I think you're on your last one, drug and substance abuse. Drug and substance abuse. We had some questions on uh, this one the last time. Um, Ms. Hoff asked if this policy had any stance on medical marijuana. And under the Medical Marijuana Act, we are not required to make any accommodation for the use of medical marijuana on the property or premises um, of any place of employment. So because you have the license and the prescription, you can't use it on school property. You can, you, you, let me phrase it. You cannot, right. You cannot use it on school property and during school hours. Cause then what it happens is it, uh, it could limit your ability to provide instruction to the students. And then that becomes um, a performance issue. Federal law still prohibits the use of marijuana. So anyone could uh, still face federal penalties. Was there any other thing else, anything else in the, oh, right here? Something mine. I appreciate you guys getting me the answer for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and this, I believe, Miss Ivory asked um, that we clarify who pays the expense for the rehab program should um, an employee need to enter a program, it shall be at the employee's expense or covered by the uh, medical uh, insurance if they have it. But it is not something that um, the school district will pay for. It will be at the uh, employee's expense. And I think that covers the gist of the updates and follow-up that we had. Are there any questions for Tracy? I think it's supposed to be substance use, not substance abuse. Where, Ms. Hoff, where did I? Where are you we'll looking? Go. No, Is we'll it, go and look at it. It says substance abuse, though. I think that's the actual name of the policy, but we'll go okay. and look. Okay. Thank you. Right here, Tracy, in the actual yeah. time. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yes. We'll verify that before we put it on the agenda for the 18th. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Tracy, I'm just going to put a note in here so that we won't forget. Okay. Uh, Right, and I think, sorry, I should have not, should have not stopped sharing. I think that's everything for tonight's uh, agenda. I believe our next yes. policy. Roberts has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, Miss Hopkins has a question. Can she ask the question? Absolutely, she can be unmuted. Go ahead, Miss Hopkins. Hi, y'all. Um, so quite, my, I put a question in the chat, but it wasn't answered. So if the person has a, mar mar a medical marijuana card, um, are they, if, if ever um, they are tested positive or s suspicion of being positive, does the card have to be on record in the human resources office? Or do they just need to produce that um, card to human resources? B part to that. Um, I know the district has a employee assistance program. Through the employee assistance program, um, there is um, a lot of a certain amount of um, sessions um, for the employee. 
There are some EAPs that you can actually get those XYZ number of sessions free. There are some EAPs where they do have to pay out of pocket. Could someone please just look in to see what our um what our well, I'm not saying policy, it's not the policy, whatever y'all know what I'm saying, I right? Know what you're saying, yes. <laughs> Um, can we look into that and see um, what is being offered to our employees if if anyone ever gets um, tested for that? You mean if they not tested, if they need to enroll in the program? Yes. Okay. So, so there was a part A question. Do you remember that, Tracy? Um, I'm, I wrote down, Ms. Hopkins asked if that card needs to be on file with human resources or if they just have to have it. So if a their... person tests positive, does that card need to be on file in HR? Yes. I will say yes. No. Did you get that? So are we following up or do you are you responding tonight? We're following up. I'm gonna follow you up. You must be on mute. Oh, can you yeah, no, I can hear. <laughs> okay. Because you can't hear. No, so this must be something with our system because it says turn up. Say I think okay, I now I hear you. All right, maybe it was me. <laughs> got it I will follow up in writing yes okay thank you I just wanted to make sure we captured it yes all right Ms. Hoff our next meeting I believe it's on December the 4th correct and um, we will have more policies coming your way What's, <laughs> do, do we know what policies are next um, some of if there's some more policies from title monitoring because we were monitored at the end of last year uh, and yep. so as a part of our corrective actions, we're making sure that all of those policies that they recommended that we update are definitely updated. Okay, perfect. So that's that's the realm. And what I will probably do is at the next meeting, bring back the plan for the year just to re-highlight um, the board so that you can see what's coming up. That would be fantastic. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Please be safe out there. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.